Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. Okay, I'm going to try to be delicate here. There was a decided absence of style points and field goals for that matter, but the Western Illinois Leathernecks still managed to survive an abysmal first half shooting against Savannah State and keep their hopes alive for an eighth straight victory. How bad was it in the first half? It was like the shot clock never even got turned on. The advantage early on went to Savannah State. The visitor starts with Robert Berger from the outside knocking down a three. Savannah State, comparatively speaking, absolutely flush with the offense, scoring 23 points in the first half. The Leathernecks struggling. This is Terrell Parks fighting through three different defenders for two of his six first half points. That was 50% of his team's first half output. As I said, it was ugly at the other end. Kiri White opening up with a three right there. Could have been worse for the Leathernecks. The defense really good, though, particularly the aforementioned Terrell Parks, who had seven, count them, seven swats on the night, including that one, the showstopper. Adam Link with a bucket right here. He finished with 10 on the night, but the Leathernecks trailed at the half 23 to 12, and these young girls were hoping things would desperately get better for Coach Mo team. They would in the second half, not decidedly, but enough to win this ball game. Don McAvoy starts off the flush in the first half. Then Jack helped gets into the act as well as the Leathernecks find some offense early in the first half. Here's help with a great take going strong to the hole, getting the deuce and the and one to go along with it. Meanwhile, Savannah State heats back up after the lead had been cut to five back to back buckets by Berger and White right here. Not enough to stave off the Leathernecks. They keep coming. The offense not working, but they just keep plugging away. Remy Roberts Burnett right here with a beautiful take. Great time for a tall glass of Remy. And then more from the outside right here. Jack helped again with a three. His team to within two. It would be a fight down the stretch. The defense standing up for Savannah State right here as uh, Patrick Hendry goes floor length. But too much of the Leathernecks to finish as they close out and get the win tonight. Despite that ugly start, 39 to 35 as Western Illinois wins its eighth straight ball game. 39 to 35 is your final. Meanwhile, the news not so good for one of the land of Lincoln's other teams tonight. Big Ten play. Illinois loses on the road and does so in kind of ugly fashion tonight against Purdue. 68 to 61. Lack of interior presence. A big, big killer tonight for the Fighting Illini. Let's do some high school girls basketball action. Semifinals of the Highland Tournament. Palmyra and South Shelby going at it. Katie Hinkle right off the bat finds Evie Miles for the three, and Palmyra was working it. South Shelby trying to answer, and they do with their best player, Cassidy Johnson, kicking it out right here to Kelly Harvey for the three. Johnson, not only a great scorer, she can do some dishing as well. Palmyra back the other direction. Megan Hooper drives to the hoop. She'll miss, but get her own offensive rebound and put it back for the easy two. Johnston, who has been, as I mentioned, really phenomenal this year for South Shelby, answers back, posting up and getting the kiss shot off the window. Too much Palmyra in this ball game, though. Emily Bross going to get the steal right here. Going to hook up with AVN. Alexis Van Nostren for the two. Palmyra wins going away. Palmyra onto the championship game on Saturday by virtue of a 67-48 victory. Meanwhile, they would take on the winner of tonight's Macon Hannibal game. Beg pardon in this one, as uh, Macon would open up in style in this game. The Tigerettes going to work. How about the tip pass right here to Audrey Freeman? She'll find Shelby Butner on the break, and there you go. The Tigerettes running more for Macon. Valerie Schmidt would steal the pass, hook up with Butner again, and Miss Butner was just cleaning up in a very big first quarter for the Macon Tigerettes. Hannibal trying to get something going. The outstanding point guard Teresa Sheffer steps up and delivers for her team, but. Hannibal really cold in that first quarter, and they could never really recover. Macon just kept attacking. Uh, more from Shelby Schaefer right here for the deuce, and then Katie Clapp from the outside for three. All Macon Tigerettes as they finish up and get the win, holding on late in this game, 39-33. So it will be Macon and Palmyra for the championship on Saturday. Other scores, consolation bracket at Highland tonight. Canton loses to Knox County, 63-35, and Clark County knocks off Highland, 49-36. Biggest upset of the night, maybe not even an upset, biggest win of the night. The Clopton girls on their home court take out Monroe City, who was undefeated, 45-37, to advance to the championship game. Up next for Clopton, a showdown with undefeated Silex, who beat Christian, 70-55. Also tonight in the consolation bracket, of things. Louisiana, a nice winner over Wright City, 48 to 11. Caitlin Bolton with 15 points in that ball game. Two more scores to leave you with tonight in Illinois. Boy, Unity does it again. A last second shot from Breanne Begeman, her team down with five seconds, just like they did against Palmyra. Unity gets the win at the buzzer, 56 to 54. And we had one boy score for you as well. How about the Griggsville Perry boys? All that momentum last week, but tonight losing on the road at North Green by the final count in that ball game of 73 to 67. Big, big night. Western Illinois still winning. Hey, they don't count 
you know, whether it's pretty or not, all they count are <laughs> wins and losses. It was one of the ugliest college basketball games I've ever watched, but like I said, beauty in the eye of the beholder. You got to right. win, that's how it goes. All right, thanks, Chris.